I can recall a time when I was a young boy, uh, my dad uh, took our family fishing, and I remember, uh, it's, it's hard to remember every detail, but some of the details that do stick out were pretty dramatic to me. I, I remember sitting on the dock, and I think I was like on a tackle box or something, and I was fishing, we're all doing some fishing, and then I don't know what happened, but at some point, I guess I just kind of drifted off. I still kind of do that sometimes, but just kind of went off my own little world. And uh, I just had my pole in the water, and I just remember thinking, that water's getting closer and closer and closer, and I just fell right in. <laughs> and at that point, I thought, man, this, it's over. Uh, that's it. I didn't make it past four, I guess. So uh, anyway, and then but next thing I know, my dad had me by the hair. I had hair then, you know? I had white hair, too. It was like blonde, white hair. If you've seen my nephew around, we, we all kind of had that, and then... God bless him as he gets older. I don't know what will happen. But when, you're, when we were little, Crowsdales just have white, blonde hair. And so he sees that, grabs me by it, picks it up. Maybe God will give me that back one day, I, I hope. You know, heaven will have that. But So he grabs me and, and picks me back up. And then from that day forward, I remember anytime someone said, hey, let's go fishing, I was like, thanks, but no thanks. I did not want anything to do with the water from then. I think even as I got a little bit older, I think we, he would take us out on the boat. And one, at one point, he said, son, you want to drive? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I, he switches seats, and I'm getting to steer, and I find in my eyesight the dock, and I went straight there. I did not want to be out there. And I was just making a beeline to get back to the shore. And uh, I did not want to be a rat, so they, they, they quickly readjusted and said, okay, you had your turn driving. But I didn't want to be out in the water any, any time after that. I mean, I, I was just done. And uh, to me, a good day of fishing was just on the shoreline. I, and if, that, if it was involved a boat or going out there, it was just I wasn't interested. Today, I think there are many Christians who find it just safer on the shore. Many Christians today do not want to go deep with God. They do not want, they're, they're comfortable, they're satisfied with their relationship uh, where it's at, and they have no intentions. Whatever the thought about going deeper with God, it's scary. And just the thought of completely in full surrender, what, what, what will God do? Is he going to call me to Africa? Is he going to do what, what I don't know? And so all I know is it's safe back here on the shore, on the dock, and, uh, not interested in going deep with God. And I'll just tell you, that's the attitude of many Christians today. They're just comfortable. That may be the attitude of some of you in here. But this morning, I pray that maybe some of that will change and that we would go deeper with God. In fact, that is the title of the sermon today, Going Deeper. Going Deeper. That's what God wants to do with us. He wants to he doesn't want to just leave us where we're at. He didn't save you just to leave you where you're at. He wants to take you deeper, but that means for you, you got to get off the shoreline. You got to get off the dock and you got to start treading out into that deep water with God, but it's really, really good. And so uh, this morning, if you'll look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm going to begin in verse 6. It says this, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. I'm going to bring out that word here in a moment. Uh, We speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So there is the text for us this morning. And the first thing I would like for you to point out, point out is the fact that God's wisdom is it's revealed to the mature you see that in verse six however we speak wisdom among those who are mature if you remember how Paul first came 
right? The section we looked at last week, he came preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. And he says, this is how I came to you when I first, when I first got to you, right? And he didn't deviate from that. He determined not to know anything else so that their faith would not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. He says, but however, in this text, however, I, we do speak, I speak wisdom among the mature. I go deeper. I go deeper with that, with them. And so how did he do that? He said, we speak wisdom. Well, this wisdom is not just any kind of wisdom. It's God's wisdom that he spoke. It's God's wisdom. If you look there, it says, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who were coming to nothing. I'm not speaking this kind of wisdom. I'm not speaking worldly wisdom. What I'm speaking is God's wisdom. And I speak that among those uh, who are mature. The reason is... It's because uh, the wisdom of the world, look, all that's fading away. It's on its way to nothing, coming to nothing. The process has already started and will culminate one day, and it'll finish. It'll be brought to nothing. The rulers of this age, God's wisdom, though, is very different. It's very different than than man's wisdom. God's wisdom is not going to come to nothing. It's already been ongoing. It's been ongoing from eternity, and it'll keep on going from eternity. So if there's any wisdom worth speaking or hearing, whose wisdom is it? God's, which is what we need to hear today. We don't need to hear man's wisdom, man's opinion, turn to first, second book of opinions. We don't need to do that. We need God's wisdom. And the only thing that that matters is what does he say? What does he say? And so, uh, in fact, God is the only one who is wise. I'll just point out a text for you. Romans chapter 16, verse 27 says this. As Paul is closing out this letter, he says to God. Notice this next phrase, alone wise. Be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. The only one who is wise is God. No one else. So if we're going to have any kind of wisdom, where does it come from? God. And it starts by knowing him personally through an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. That is where the beginning of wisdom even starts. Proverbs 1, 7, the the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Beginning of wisdom. And so Paul says, I speak this wisdom among the mature. mature." What he's saying is, I couldn't go deeper with you, Corinthians. I couldn't. When I'm on the mature, I do that. But but with you, I I couldn't do that. I speak wisdom, though, God's wisdom among the mature. So they they weren't mature yet is what he's saying. They were spiritual babies. They were spiritual infants. They hadn't gone deep with God. They're still on the shoreline. And this is what he's saying. He says, I can't go deeper with you because you're over here. But those who are out there, I'll go deeper with them. For you, I couldn't treat you that way. And so um, they're, they're, this definition of mature means full grown. Full grown. Uh, it's, uh, you've reached adulthood. But I'm, this is speaking though in spiritual terms, right? When one is born again, right? You're, you're a baby, right? When you, be, when you come to know Jesus Christ, if you can think back, when you came to know Jesus Christ, he awakened your heart, right? He enlightened you. you you're, he opened your eyes. You were seeing things for the very first time. You're a baby at that point. You needed someone to come along and disciple you, teach you about God, teach you about the Bible, and because you couldn't feed yourself, right? So these have never progressed from this point. They never went deeper. They never could go further, right? And so uh, they, they hadn't reached adulthood. They hadn't reached this maturity. And uh, the author of Hebrews deals with this same subject. I'd like to read Hebrews chapter 5, uh, beginning with verse 12. The author of Hebrews is kind of dealing with something similar. These, these uh, Jews here had been leaving the faith, right? They, had, they, they were leaving something, going back to the temple, and, uh, and so this, this letter is an exhortation to them. And here in this point, he says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you. Again, the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. You're an infant. But solid food belongs to those who are, look at that, of full age. There's your word, that mature, the same word used as Paul used. For those who are of full age, those who are mature, that is, those who by reason of use, which means practice, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. 
This one who it didn't stay there. He, he grew in his faith. This one could exercise, could see life from God's perspective, which is the definition of wisdom, when you can see life from God's perspective and then practice, act accordingly. You see the way that God sees it, right? Because he's the only one that's wise. He gives you insight into this situation, not so you can have some knowledge there, but so that you will do what's right in his eyes and you're able to discern what's good and evil. And as you obey, you proved yourself to live like a wise person, one who acts the way God desires you to act. Those who don't do that, the Bible calls fools. All throughout the Bible, you see that the wise person contrasted with the fool. And so uh, he says... Some of you should be teachers by now, right? Yeah, but, but you need someone to come and teach you, stick a bottle in your mouth, and start teaching you elementary principles. Why? Still out here on the shore. Still on the dock. That never wanted to go deeper. I wonder how many in here today is that way. How long have you been coming? How long have you been hearing the word? You've been getting the word here a long time. Some of you should be teachers by now. Or do you still need someone to come take a bottle, stick it in your mouth, so that you can feed on the elementary principles. God's desire for every believer is to go deeper. Not just to stay where you're at, but to go deeper. That comes by obeying the word. Obedience does not come by knowledge. Many people think that, and I'll tell you, the, 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 the biblical scholarly critics of the day, atheists, probably know more scripture uh, than maybe even any of us in this room, but are refusing to submit to it. You wouldn't call them growing, right? You would call them lost, right? That's a lot of knowledge they're going to take into hell one day. Growth comes by hearing and doing the word. Growth comes by your obedience. It's obedience is how you grow. And so uh, 1 Peter, we see a little bit of that as well. In 1 Peter chapter 2, I'd like to read a verse here. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says this, As newborn babes, right? As a newborn baby desires the desire the pure milk of the word look at this that you may grow thereby verse 3 is kind of key too if it's a big word if indeed you have tasted that the lord is gracious if you've tasted the freedom that's in christ you have tasted forgiveness and grace and mercy that god gives through his son jesus christ then your desire should be for the word because the word is how you grow in fact, Jesus, in the, in, his, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was praying in John 17, he said, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. That's how we're sanctified. That's how we're going to grow, not by seeing it, not by looking at the pictures, not by looking at the maps. It's by looking at the word of God, seeing what God says to you, and then based on his revelation he gives to you as he speaks through his word, you do it. It's actually kind of simple. Where it gets kind of complicated and messed up is we hear, but we don't like what we heard. We hear, but we say, dang it, God's asking me to do that. God's saying, come out here, come to the deep water. You're on the shoreline, but come out. And the water's good. All those fears of the unknown, all that stuff, you leave all the consequences to your obedience to God. You just obey him, and you'll find out as you step out, you step out on sure ground. Peter actually found that out for a little bit until he took his eyes off. The obedience, growth, all that comes, comes through the word of God. If you neglect the word of God, you've neglected your growth. You neglect the word of God, you've neglected the way you can hear from God. You've neglected the way that you're supposed to grow in this mature, full-age Christian. God never designed for his Christians to stay a baby. So... We have this uh, here. And so Paul was dealing that with 1 Corinthians 2. In fact, if you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, just this next chapter, uh, I'd like to read verse. I'm kind of dipping into a kind of a future sermon, I think. But it's, it's connected here. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as the spiritual people, but as to carnal. Look at this. As to babes in Christ. As a bunch of babies, I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you're still not able. I still can't speak wisdom among you people. I still got to go to the elementary stuff of the faith. For you are still carnal. And then he gives a reason. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I'm of Paul, another, I'm of Apollos, are you not carnal? Look at the way you're acting. It's no different between the way you're acting and a lost person's acting. And that's, that's problematic. And so, uh, in fact, I actually uh, 
found a, a picture uh, that uh, was in the church directory there at 1 Corinthians. You already see this? Can we put that on the screen? It's flattering, right? Okay, so it's not from their church directory. But if you were to have a church directory of this church and you were looking through there, you would see a lot of this. As you're flipping through the pages. Oh man, he looks like he's 64 years old or so. Spiritual age, one. Still a bit. See, maturity is not based on your age. Maturity is not based on how long you've been in church. Maturity is not based on what you know about the Bible. Maturity is not based on any of those things. Maturity is based on your spiritual age. How much have you grown since you've come to faith in Christ? So just think about this for a moment, if you will. Just in your mind, can you think back to the moment you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Can you get there? Some may have to go back further than others. Do you think you get that moment in your head? You got that? Now, if you can't, here's, the, here's an issue. If you can't do that, the Bible says you're lost. And today would be a great day for you to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. Because there is a day of salvation. You don't ooze on into salvation and one day, oh, I think I'm saved. That's not how it works. God speaks, you repent, there's conviction, you put your faith and trust in Christ. So for some of you, if that's happened to you, you can think back to that day. You can remember that. You got that in your mind? Now think of today where you're at. And just think, what's happened since that time and where I'm at now? What's happened? Are you still on the shore? Have you waded out in the deep water yet with God? Or, or you can kind of just say, you know what, I'm... I'm kind of comfortable where I'm at. How about this? Is there a desire to grow? I'm telling you, if there, that desire's not there, then something, something's happened very wrong in our Christian experience with God. Because the desire for a believer should be this. Thank you for saving me. Here is my life. Of course I'll surrender all to you. What else do you want me to do? Show me that next step so that I can obey it. I'm ready. There's this desire to grow. For, for me, it just came down. I got saved, and I just I didn't know anything about the Bible, and then there was this immediate hunger and thirst for the Word of God. Just I, I just couldn't get enough of it. That is the way, as you're sucking on that bottle, right? Someone's teaching you how to do it, right? This is what it means, and you're getting discipled and bringing you to maturity. It never gets old, because guess what? God's wisdom is infinite and unsearchable. There's, there, we can never get to a point where we say, okay, I'm done. I've had enough. We can keep growing the rest of this life and still never scratch the surface of knowing God. It's incredible. And it's a lifelong journey that God wants us to step off the shore and go deeper. And the tragedy is many Christians today say, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable where I'm at and I don't really want to go out there. But I'm telling you, that's where you experience God's very best and just the glorious unknown. I even written a song about that. Just the glorious unknown as God takes you down his path. What it's going to require of you to get off the shore, though, you're going to have to do this. Okay, that plan I had for my life, those things that I wanted, here. And I'm going to take a step of faith and let him direct you. And I'm just telling you, that's, that's where it is. If not, you substitute for your own plans the Bible says that wisdom, what's going to happen to it? It's going to come to nothing. It's just a matter of time. It's already dead. It just hadn't happened yet. God's wisdom is for the mature, and that's where, that's where Paul was speaking to. I, I, I wanted to come to you this way, but, I, but the wisdom is for the mature. That's what God reveals it to. And I'll just tell you right now, we have, we have a need for teachers here. We need teachers that will stand up and prepare and teach the Word of God. If not, what's going to happen? We'll have an entire church that looked just like this picture. We're all walking in. We may look in our earthly years kind of season like we progress, but, but spiritually, if you could see us, imagine that the veil was removed and we could just kind of see where our spiritual age was at. That might be pretty embarrassing. That might be pretty embarrassing. We need teachers who are ready that can take others, take that next step. Some of you may be ready for that, and that's, that's what we need here. The problem is you can only take someone as far as you've been. Can a baby feed another baby? Baby can't feed another baby. In fact, if, you've got, if you had kids before, you didn't take your baby home and just set them on the ground and say, okay, feed yourself, take care of yourself, there's the bathroom, there's the trash can. That's, make sure you get the trash can. That's not the way it is, is it? 
Nope, you're feeding them, taking care of them, you're making them grow. It's the same way for a Christian. But a baby can't feed another baby. You can't take someone else further than you've been yourself. If you're still on the dock, you can't tell someone how to get out there in the deep water if you're still on the shoreline. We need people in this church to get authentic and go deep and have a real, genuine commitment with Jesus Christ, and that will go deep with him. And I'll tell you, there's no limit to what God will do with this church. Imagine if the, everyone in here, we saw the pulled the veil back and the spiritual age was all into maturity. We would see some incredible things happen here, but we won't if we just stay on the shoreline. God wants us to go deeper. The immature, though, they can. It's impossible for them. Uh, God's uh, wisdom, it says in verse 7, it's a mystery, right? So look here at verse, verse 7. He says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. So this word mysterion, it means secret, right? Uh, this, it's something that we can't figure out. Many people today, if you share the word mystery, their mind may go to a mystery novel, right? That's something you can kind of figure out, right? That's, uh, they enjoy those, right? So I can figure this out if I follow the right trail here. This mystery, this wisdom, is something that cannot be attained. In fact, it remains hidden unless God reveals it. It's not something you can figure out. And so this hidden wisdom, this, this mystery, uh, it's, it's hidden. The secret things of God remain that way unless he reveals them. That's where we get our word revelation. God reveals something that could not otherwise be known. God reveals. I'm telling you, even that stuff's for the mature, right? And so we're going to uh, dip into that here in a little bit. But he, he reveals these things. And so when he says they're, they're for our glory, uh, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. This hidden wisdom, these secret things that belong to God have been there for a long time. His plan was in place before he ever created. Jesus Christ was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. But this wisdom was hidden among those previous. Now we can look back on the Old Testament and we see how Jesus fits, it's clear, and, but it wasn't that. It wasn't that, that way for them. I mean, it was, it was laid out in the Old Testament, but they, they missed it. In fact, he goes on to say here, he says, This ordained before our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, because if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Which I'd like to point out to you is a perfect contrast. Because it says this was done for our glory. It's more or less speaking of our glorification in the future. Right? God's not sharing his glory with anybody. And the reason why that's even made possible, that one day he's going to set everything right. We'll no longer have a sin nature. We'll be glorified, complete. We'll be like him. Because the Lord of glory. Those two are contrasted in this text. And that Lord of glory is none other than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You want to tap into God's wisdom, the wisdom of God, as he's already said in chapter 1, the wisdom of God is Christ. It is Jesus. You don't get God's wisdom any other way. You have to go through Jesus Christ. That's the only way you get what God's uh, thinking is, what, 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 what he would say to you. Anything that you tap into God must be through Jesus Christ. You have to go through him. And so... Um, we have this, that the mature, they, they, they can't, they can't go deeper because they don't, they don't know Jesus. You don't know Jesus, you don't know God. But in verse 9 he says, but as it is written, I has not seen or ear heard nor have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. A couple things I would want to point out here just in this text. Number one, it's amazing to think that what God has prepared for us hadn't even been revealed yet. We could sit here all day long and think one day, what's heaven going to be like? What, what's it going to be? Um, and we couldn't even scratch the surface. Which is one reason why I kind of have problems with those who write these books about how heaven is for real and all these other different things out there. Heaven is for real, but look, we can know that because of the Bible, not because of a movie or a book. But there's all these competing voices for the Bible today. They're everywhere. And I'm just telling you, this is where we get God's wisdom, the Bible. Not the competition for the Bible. Okay? There's nothing we couldn't even imagine what heaven would be like. It's never even entered the man's heart. But he says this has been prepared for those who love him. There is the mark of God's person. The one who loves him. In fact, the mark of our love for Jesus Christ is our obedience to Jesus. He mentions that in John 14. He equates obedience with love. If you love me, keep my commandments. 
Those who don't love me don't keep my commandments. And I will not make my home with him. Love is equated with obedience. If you have an obedience problem, the real problem is it's not an obedience problem. you got a love problem. It's a love issue. Our love for God is what makes us get out in the deep water. Our love for him is what makes me take that first step. Because I love him, I want to obey what he says. Because I love him, I trust him. And I have faith in whatever he's going to ask me to do. I trust in his character. And so when we take that step, it's out of love. And all those steps that were taken, all the way back even to Abraham, they loved God. God was real to them. And they obeyed. And so... This is the way God's revelation works. It's for the wise. God says, and I've prepared all these things for those who love me. So how is God's wisdom revealed? How does he reveal? How is this wisdom revealed, right? So that's a big question. All right, so, okay, revelation's possible. Uh, it's for the mature. Uh, we, only get this re- we only get so much revelation if we're kind of babes. So then how is this even possible? How is the revelation even revealed? Well, God's wisdom is revealed By the Holy Spirit. Look in verses 10 and 11. He says, But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Number one, let me point out something to you. So the Holy Spirit is the revealer, right? He takes of what is God and reveals it to us. That can't happen if he's not there. That's a pretty logical conclusion, right? If the Holy Spirit's not here inside of me and dwelling in me, then he can't reveal wisdom. So there's a problem, which he's going to point out. A lost person can't understand these things. It's a spiritual thing, right? Which the Holy Spirit's got to be in place for this to happen. So that can't happen if he's not there. And this is another issue. He comes and this is not something you've got to wait. I've got to get a second baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've got to get something else of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came into your life the moment you trusted in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit and happens immediately at the moment you trust in him. God did not withhold anything from you. He gave you 100% of himself. The real question for the believer is how much is he going to get of you? How much is he going to get of you? How much are you going to experience God? depends on your obedience. It's all dependent upon your obedience. God will speak. He'll take you. He'll, 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 he'll give you direction. He gives out wisdom. He's not going to just drag us out and out there. We've got to take a step based on his revelation. And when we do, God reveals more about himself than we had previously. And we start going deeper and deeper into the infinite intimacy we have with God through Jesus Christ. So he comes in, and that's, that's called when he comes in that you're born again. And he opens your eyes for the first time. He connects you to Jesus Christ and to his church, and that's what the Holy Spirit does. He reveals these things. And so um, he reveals as we obey. Now, here's a, here, let, me, let me go into something here. If you say, okay, preacher, I hear what you're saying. I'm fine with that. I can point back to my salvation. I, I know he's there. I've had this uh, encounter with Jesus Christ face to face. I remember it as if it happened yesterday. I know it's. There. I know he's. I know it's. I know he's there. But I'm still not. Heaven seems silent. I'm not getting. Not getting anything revealed to me. Right, God's. What, what's going on? Let me give you a couple possibilities of why there may not be uh, something happening there. Number one. There's a step of obedience you haven't taken. Maybe. Maybe that's it. God has been telling you to do something, and you haven't done it. Or he's been telling you not to do something, and you keep doing it. One of those two things can quench or grieve the Holy Spirit. Right? The Holy Spirit's not an it. He's a he. He can be grieved. He can be quenched. Right? So he comes in. He's, he's there for all eternity. He seals us, stamps us. He's there. But then as soon as our flesh nature takes back over control, he's grieved. He's quenched. And disobedience is sin. And that's what will do that. That will do that. So maybe, maybe, maybe that's something. That, and you just what you do is you simply ask him, God, if there's something hindering your perfect will being done in my life, would you just search out my heart? Try me. Know my anxiety. See if there's any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Ask him and he'll show you. Here's the thing, though. You need to be prepared for what you hear. Because confession is agreeing. The word it means agree, agreeing with God that it, that is sin if he reveals that to you. So that could be one. Two, it's, number, it, it's there's just sin. There's just sin present in your life somewhere. 
So either there's a step of obedience you hadn't taken or there's sin. And here's the, here's the deal. Does it make sense for God to give you future revelation if you hadn't obeyed his present revelation? No. Your future revelation you get from God is contingent upon what you do with what he's revealed to you presently. If you're not doing what he says to do now, you've halted your growth. You have stunted it, and you're, not, and you're going to stay there until you deal with this. But if you will deal with this, as you take a next step, he gives you more and reveals himself. You experience him in a fresh way, and then you begin to grow. And you go from this little baby who's been sucking on a bottle who now can get on a T-bone. And you start growing and start taking in something a little bit deeper. And not on the elementary principles of the faith, but it's by your obedience. It is by obedience, obedience, obedience. So those are just some possibilities if you're not hearing God's voice. There's others we could go on out there. If you're waiting on God and all those things, and you're, you maybe, all right, there's no sin. He hasn't revealed something. I'm just waiting. And I'm caught in this kind of what he knows right where you're at. The thing you don't need to do, don't neglect Bible study and don't neglect prayer because he will speak in his timing when he's ready. So if you're waiting, you continue to wait in faithfulness. And so here as we move on, God's wisdom is revealed by the Spirit because the Holy Spirit is God. Here I want to point out this is a text that we can go to that affirms and confirms the deity of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. Look here in the second part of verse 10. It says, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. He searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Well, let me point out to you a verse here in Romans 11. In Romans chapter 11, verse 33, it it says this. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. He's unsearchable. Let the man, I, there's, there's no how depth they are. It's just infinite of God. They're, they're unsearchable. In verse 34, for, what has known, for who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has become his counselor? Who has first given to him and it shall be repaid to him? For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Well, so the Bible makes it clear that there, you can't search him out because of the depths, how infinite he is. Well, you can do that if you're God. We can't, but guess who can? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, and many, and I I hate this in Baptist life, he's he's neglected, right? And it's just, oh, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is the power source of the church. He's the power source for your Christian life. He is the one who takes of God and reveals it to you. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. We can't even begin to fathom the depths and the infiniteness of God. But the Spirit can go all the way, all into affinity. Because he is God. And guess who's inside of you if you're in Jesus Christ? The Holy Spirit. And what does he do? As we obey, he takes of God and reveals. That's that word, revelation. That thing that was hidden, he reveals. I'm not talking about revelation like biblical revelation, okay? I'm talking about the revelation is done, okay? There's no new that you can add to this, what we have. So I'm not talking about that. The Holy Spirit will illuminate what's already written. He teaches us. What I'm talking about is the revelation for your life as God speaks into you and gives you direction. And I'll tell you, it will never be apart from the word. It will not contradict the word in any way. If it does, that wasn't the Holy Spirit. You had some bad pizza or you just your thoughts are off. You need to quit watching TV late at night and leaving it on and going to sleep. The Holy Spirit's not going to depart from the Word. He will never take anything out of context, ever. Ever. So, He reveals. So, He can do that because He is God. The deep things of God. The Holy Spirit can do that. Verse 11 is His illustration. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? That's true, right? You know what your neighbor's thinking right now? Besides that, I hope the sermon's over pretty soon and it's kind of, I'm getting hungry. Ultimately, No. I hope that's not it, but possibly. No, no one really does. You don't even know what I'm thinking right now. I barely do. Right? So, I mean, what, what's going on inside of the person next to you? Only they know. Only the spirit of the man in him knows that deep thing that's inside of him. So he says this in the next verse. Even so, in the same way, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. He knows. He knows everything about God because he is God. He knows the depths and the infinites of God because he is God. 
And he says this, this is amazing, in verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. God's wisdom is ready to take you on to maturity. He says he'll give it out freely. We have received this, not the spirit of the world, not, that, not the spirit of the world that's going to come to nothing, not that kind of wisdom. No, the spirit who is from God, that's what we've received. If you're in Christ, that's what you received. He's yours. He seals you. You can't get out of it. I mean, it, it, he takes you all the way to the very end. You're in his hand. You've been sealed. Spirit who is from God, look at this. Here's the purpose, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. God's not stingy. God's not withholding stuff back from you. God's ready to take you out on the deep water. He's saying, come on. The water's fine out here where I am. But guess what you're going to do? You have to get out of the boat. Peter had to do that. You have to get off the shore. You're going to have to get off the dock and start taking steps of faith. And when you get out there, guess what? Yeah, there's a sure foundation. If it's God's word you're listening to and it's God's word that you obey, there is a sure foundation for every single step. And he will not withhold anything from you for you to, in order to fulfill the perfect purpose and plan he has for your life. Everything you need to know about living in the center of God's will, he's willing to reveal to you. The question is, do you want to get off the dock? Do you want to, do you want to grow? Do you want to go from where you're at to where God wants to take you. For you to do that, for some, you're going to have to get off the shoreline. You're going to have to get off the dock, and he will do that. See, I can remember back whenever I was a kid, and uh, that, that experience just was tragic for me. <laughs> I, anytime someone said, I want to go fishing, I was like, yes, if we're going to be on the dock, I'll go. If they said boat or something else, I was not interested. Just had a bad experience. You want to talk about it? No, I just don't want to go, right? But you know what happened? Eventually I got older, and I started realizing, oh, it's not so bad. I kind of learned how to swim a little bit too. And uh, once I got out there, I was like, man, this is kind of fun. And here's the thing, this is what happened. Once I tasted what, what it was really like, I didn't want to go fishing off the dock anymore. Guess where I wanted to go? No, go on the deep water, man. Let's go get some big ones, right? Let's get some, we'll lie about them when we get back. You know, that's what fishermen do. So, look, here's the deal. Once you grow, you don't want to go back here. I mean, do you want to just stay a spiritual baby? No. You get off the dock, you start wading out in the deep water. This stuff right here won't do it for you anymore. The elementary principles, no, give me some meat. Give me some good stuff. Anybody ready for some meat today? You want to grow? Get off the dock and quit standing there scared to death of what God's going to ask you to do. Will you love him and trust him? And obey him. As we prepare for this last song, let me follow up with you just a few questions. Are you in need of some direction today? Maybe, maybe there's something in your life and you need some wisdom. You need, you need God's will, not the wisdom of the world. They got nothing to offer, right? This is the perfect time for me to say, if you're going to a lost friend for advice, you're already doomed. The only person that should have influence in your life is God and his people. Someone who is praying, someone who is walking with Jesus Christ, someone who doesn't have the spirit grieved inside of them, someone who can say from God's perspective, Here, here's some good counsel. And then you take some of that. And then you take the word of God. And then in prayer, you're going to God. You need some counsel today. You need some wisdom. If that's you today, ask. But here's the deal. Ask and listen with the intent of obeying. There's the key. You need to listen with the intent of, I'm going to do whatever he's told me to do. Would you do that today? He gives out freely to everyone who wants it. If you want it, it's yours today if you'll ask him. Are you in the position of some of these Corinthian believers? Maybe you're late in your earthly years, but, you know, spiritually, I'm still very, very young. Maybe that's true of you today. Well, here's the good news. The good news is, number one, you've recognized it. Number two, it's never too late. For you to grow. The only time it's too late for you is when you slip off into eternity. At that point, there's no saying, okay, God, I'll go back and have a quiet time now. Okay, I'll go get right with so-and-so. Okay, I'll do this. It's kind of over at that point. You still have breath in your lungs today. There's an opportunity and a chance for you to grow if you make that decision now. I don't care how late you are in your earthly years. You can take whatever you have and whatever's left and say, okay, I'll obey you. I'll do it. I want to grow. And even wherever you're at today, from youth 
kid, child, all the way up. It's never too late for you to say, okay, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to grow today and do what God wants me to do. What's, so what's keeping you? What's keeping you from growing today? If he's pointing out something, there's sin. If he's pointing out something, there's a lordship issue. During this song as we sing, I want you to deal with that. Just simply ask God today. If you don't know, God, show that to me. And I believe he will reveal that. Whatever step God has taken you today, my invitation for you this morning is this. Would you take it? As we stand and sing this next song, this is a time for you. You can take that next step and go deeper with God. So would you stand with me as, during this time and as we sing, however you need to go deeper with God. For some of you, remember God's wisdom is for the mature. The immature can't handle it. A lost person can't handle it. The Spirit's not there. Maybe the first step of obedience for you is to give your life to Jesus Christ. And this invitation is wide open for you to do that. If God's Spirit is speaking to you, He's telling you it's you, you need to give your life to me, the invitation for you is you give your life and submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's the decision you want to make today. I invite you as we sing that you come forward and make that public and come down and let us pray with you and talk with you about that. Maybe going deeper with you is getting and plugged into a local church. If you're going to go deeper with God, that's where he's going to take you. He's not going to isolate you out on some island. He's going to connect you with other believers. And if you say, you know what, I've been coming here and I, need to, I, I do need to join. I, I, I've been coming here for a while and I want to go deeper with God. Maybe that step for you is to be a part of our fellowship. Make that official and come forward and, and join our church family today. The invitation for you is wide open. Maybe going deeper for you is dealing with sin. You just need to pray, commit yourself to the Lord. However you need to do, may God bless us as we go deeper together with Jesus Christ. May he bless our church as we go deeper. As we sing, obey, won't you come?